I'm Alex and today I wanted to share with you my take on the Dior Saddlebag. On this video I'll share with you how I created the pattern piece and puzzle my way through joining it all into one beautiful bag. Anyways, if it's your first time here, I like to make all kinds of DIYs on this channel. So don't forget to check out my other videos and subscribe if you want to support me. With all that being said, let's go make a bag! Okay, so pay attention now, because I made a million mistakes during this project and maybe what I say on the video is a bit different than what is on the images. So first, I wanted to make this diagram of the bag to show you the overall shape of it, as well as getting a list of all the pattern pieces required. I recommend that you look for as much pictures as you can before starting this project, because it has many details. And here is the summary. Take a screenshot, click. Once I knew what I needed to make, I went ahead and looked for some pictures of the back where you could see it flat on the front and back. And since the bag is on the smaller size, it can pretty much fit into the screen on its full size scale. If you go to the Dior website, you'll find the actual measurements of the bag. And all you have to do next is measure the picture on the screen with the measuring tape till the picture of the bag matches the measurements. Once you do that, it is easy to copy the shape of the separate pieces onto a piece of paper. As I showed you before, you'll need two body shapes, two pieces for the bottom of the bag, plus the side rounded tops, the back pocket, few strap pieces, and a flap. The flap is the trickier piece to make, because you'll need to add a few centimeters in between the back and the front. I did about 3 inches or 6 centimeters since it is specified in the website that the bag is about that thickness in size. Remember that the front body piece and the back should be a mirror of each other. And if you did everything good enough, you should have something like this. Oh, and don't forget the seam allowance. I am using I am using a soft leather-like material. Plastic. So I am cutting the lining out of a sturdier fabric for some structure. But, you know, it's up to you. I think the bag definitely would have been easier to close with a thinner lining, but this bag is all about the structure look, so I don't know, maybe use some interfacing to stiffen up the fabric instead? The first thing that we need to work on is the flap. First, we need to sew it to the lining with the right sides facing each other. Making little cuts around the edges makes for an easier flip. Once the nice side is out, you want to top stitch it down all around the edge. And once that it's done, you are going to place the flap on the back panel and sew it down using a zigzag stitch. This part is not going to be visible, but feel free to cover it with a piece of fabric if you wish a nicer look. I did not. Now it's time to add the back pocket. First, finishing the top edge and then sewing it along the curved bottom. I also cut at the front corner and sew it back on. This I did just overlapping them a bit since I couldn't figure out any other way. The bottoms are going to be sewn to each front and back separately, once again along the curved bottom edge and with the right sides facing each other. And then attach to each other down the middle by flipping only one of the sides out and then getting the unflipped ones inside the flipped one. It is a bit confusing, but just look at the video so you can understand what I mean. When making the lining, you are going to want to do the opposite thing, so again, flip out only one of the sides, but this time get the flip one inside the one you didn't flip. I hope this all makes sense. 
And now, for the last part, you'll need to add whatever buckles it is that you have, chosen for the size on the rounded top side pieces. And I printed these letters that imitate the ones on the original Dior saddlebag, but it can, you know, be anything you want. So that finally, you can close up the sides of the bag, pinning this in place. This was one of the harder parts, but just remember to go little by little, and you'll get there, trust me. I even had to attach a piece of extra fabric because I didn't make this part long enough on either of the sides. So keep that in mind if you're recreating this project. Make it a bit longer than I did. To make the straps, I simply sewed together two strips of faux leather along the edges and then added them to the back sewing as close as I could to the buckles and then cutting off the excess. The last thing to do is to make the lining and to add it in and close the back folding the inside edge in. Sorry, and close the back folding the outside edge in to give it a nice finished look. This was also very difficult, so of course it is always a choice to add bias tape all around instead. I added the decorative strips on the front by sewing them on fold on the edge and the back was officially finished. Here is a time lapse of me painting the back with acrylic paint. Trying to imitate the original back on the thumbnail but I don't know. What do you guys think? Did it look better before or do you actually like the tiger? Comment down below. And that's it, let's see some more reveal shots. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe for more affordable DIYs. Comment down below if there is something that you would like to see me try on next episode. And I'll see you guys next time!